Hello and welcome to a quick video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. In this video we are going to use a program called Inkscape which is a free to download uh, program and we're going to use it to vectorize a raster image so that we can laser cut it on our laser cutter. Um, you can also use these as the starting point for a uh, uh, cookie cutter if you're going to 3D model it or something like that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the internet and we're going to Google something. I googled spider. Here's a bunch of spiders. If I'm going to trace this in using the Inkscape Auto Trace, I probably want uh, something with a nice uh, clear background. If you get one with a transparent GIF background, um, that will co copy in black, so you might want to use a snipping tool if you're going to do that. Um, for this one, you want to pick one without a bunch of other stuff because when I trace, it's going to trace based on whether it's light or dark. So you either want um, a light colored object on a dark background or a dark colored object on a light background. So I'm going to pick this one. Um, and I can copy this image by just choosing right click copy image. Or I can use the snipping tool and draw a box around it. It will automatically copy. I'm going to go into Inkscape and hit paste by right clicking. Now I've got my image here. I can resize it. Hold control to resize while maintaining proportions. The instructions are right down here about the modifiers for different keys. I'm going to right click on the image while it's selected. You see the dotted line that means it's selected. Right click. I'm going to choose trace bitmap. This is also under the uh, path menu, trace bitmap. You can also do shift alt B. It opens up this window. As long as my object is selected and I have it on trace bitmap, if I hit update, it will show. Um, you can adjust the threshold and hit update. To show it again and the way I explain this to my students is if we're laser cutting this you get to take home the black part so you can see these black parts are separate right now which means it would not quite turn out the way you'd want you want to adjust this if you get too high you're gonna get some of these um, shadows are gonna be dark enough to be cut off by the threshold um, so you can adjust this threshold to be where you want it to be you want if you're in a laser cut it you want these objects to be connected to each other there's also some other options I recommend you could try out colors or grays and change the number of scans if you're doing colors or grays um, I recommend uh, ungrouping the arrangement so you can look at the different versions that they, it's given you um, I don't use these other ones very often but you can try them all out um, remember the black part is the part you get to take home if you laser cut it um, so this image the bands are awfully light they're awfully close to the background color so maybe this is my best image right so then I might go back and I might choose a different image with a little bit clearer background and if I have a different image that I like I can copy that image and go back sometimes you make your life easier just by switching images so I press delete on the keyboard paste the new image trace bitmap update all right I, I like this I've got good edges I'm gonna hit OK so when I hit OK nothing seems to happen I'm gonna close this window and what has happened is it has created a, a vector image on top so raster versus vector this image right here is made out of colored dots so it can display on your screen this image right here is made out of control points and lines between them that are defined by vectors so that basically gives a pathway for the laser to follow so this one the laser can follow this one my laser cannot some lasers will engrave like this but mine will not um, on this one I am going to use this if I get sent this right to the laser right now it would cut everything out this part would be separate I can also edit it by giving it a double click it'll show all the little nodes I can select the nodes I want to delete and press delete if you accidentally delete only part of what you're trying to delete hold control and scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in for example on this this one right here if I delete um, if I delete these two, it'll change my circle, but if I delete one more, it creates this line, and that'll make my laser just go shooting off into space. So I want to make sure I delete the whole thing. There's some other ways of modifying things. You can do Control L to reduce the number of nodes. Sometimes that'll simplify your, your drawing a lot, but you can see now I have 377 nodes, whereas before I had 3,342 nodes. So this is ready to be laser cut um, these little holes will be cut out of it as well um, to save this let's go to my outline here here's what we're doing we're copying the image we trace the base map now we have to save twice 
Saving twice is important because we have to save it once for the laser. Our laser takes DXF files, as do most um, CAD programs for importing and things like that. And I also want to save it to edit it in case I want to change things around later. The DXF file doesn't save enough information for me to open an Inkscape and do anything uh, with it, like make any changes to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the file twice. So the first time I'm going to save the file, I can choose save or save as because it doesn't matter. I need, still need to tell it where to go. I'm saving it in this folder here. And I want to save it as a DXF file. So where it says save as type, I'm going to choose desktop cutting plotter AutoCAD DXF. That's the type of file that our laser likes. I'm going to name it something that I can find later. I'm going to hit save. Our laser speaks millimeters, so I have to change this base unit to millimeters, otherwise it will come out the wrong size. If I save it as millimeters, then it should come out the size that I have set it to here and you can tell this is a sheet of paper so you can tell it will be quite large about the size of a sheet of paper so now this is ready to go to the laser and I can turn that into Google Classroom and I will look at it and laser cut it um, if I want to edit this again later I also need to save again but if I ask if I don't remember that and I just try and close this it'll warn me it'll say do you want to save this as an Inkscape SVG because you're going to lose your data, which means you can't edit it later. So you can choose save as Inkscape SVG or you can just cancel and choose save as. Because if I hit save, it's just going to update my DXF file. But if I choose save as, it will automatically choose Inkscape SVG, same name, hit save. I always save it with the same name so I can tell which files go with which. All right, so that's it. My laser is ready to cut this out. Um, watch my other videos to figure out more cool things you can do with the laser in Inkscape or how to take these into uh, an AutoCAD program. Uh, thanks for watching.